Welcome back guys. Welcome back to the series. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, remember to hit the subscribe button. We're moving on to the next episode. Here it is. Y'all enjoy and I will catch you on the next one. Have a good one. Hey y'all, welcome back to the Gear Rack series. We are picking up where we left off part three with part four and we're putting the decking board on top of the gear rack. I'm still trying to figure out the best way to cut these slots for the support beams up top. Using a jigsaw tends to splinter the wood, so I'm looking for something that makes a lot better looking cut. I call this section the headboard because it's typically where the coat racks go on and you hang all the gear from. But as you can see, I'm trying to manhandle it up there and it's really a pain doing it this way. Since doing this addition, I figured out an easier way of hoisting the board up there. This is how I make the bracket to mount the headboard or to keep it secured in place. Also, since doing this addition, I figured out a more seamless way of mounting the board up there to where you can't even tell how it's mounted. It looks so much better than this, but again, this was the first attempt. Putting on the last headboard bracket, using the vice grip pliers to hold it in place. Now we're gonna weld it in place. I'm not worried about the wood when I weld. I instantly spray the WD-40 on it and cool it off. The oil helps absorb some of the heat from the board. And now that all the brackets are in place, we can drill the holes out. Since the holes are drilled out, now we can put the carriage bolts in. This is also a design flaw in how I mounted the headboards. Uh, the first time you saw me welding, I was welding the outer side of the brackets. I felt that the weight that was gonna be put on the headboard, I needed to weld the top of the brackets. So now I'm having to go back on top and weld those before putting on the top deck boards. Nothing about this right here is safe. There's no wheel locks on this thing. There are no wheel locks on the table that I'm standing on. So nothing about this is safe that you're watching. Again, I just moved into the shop and I didn't have a whole lot of tools at the time. So I did what I had to do to get stuff done. Mounting the decking board on top is not too much of a challenge. You can see I got the vice grip on the end helping hold it in place. Depending on where you get it from, you can end up with some really warped boards and then it takes a vice grip for every single support and a clamp to kind of push it together to get the bow out of it. 
Once it's on top though, we can go in from the bottom side and drill the holes for the carriage bolts. There was already holes in the metal support pre-drilled before I welded them in. So now I'm just going back and drilling the holes into the wood and placing the carriage bolts in it. You can see this tool right here in my hand is an electric ratchet. This is the snap-on model. They were the first ones to come out with it at the time. So that's how I ended up with it. There are newer, cheaper versions. Milwaukee has a great one, but there are other ones that you can get. Man, these things are worth the money. If you don't have it, I promise you, no matter what you do, these things will always come in handy. Now that I have the measurements for the coat hangers, I'm going back and bolting them on. I typically pre-drill my holes for the screws. That way I can ensure they're going in straight and they're exactly where I want them. That way the coat hanger is not leaning toward one side or the other because some people are really OCD and it will mess with them. Doing the same thing to the back side, I got the measurements put on, so now I can get the coat hangers out. And they come in a package, and the screws come in a package inside of a package, so it's a lot to open up. What you just watched was me opening up six packets times two, so there's 12 packets I had to open up at one time. I went ahead and cut them open, and now I'm screwing them onto the back side of the headboard. Well, y'all, this is the end of the video and also the end of the gear rack series. I hope y'all enjoyed it. I'm trying to get a little better at this whole voiceover thing. I've changed some stuff up, and I feel like I'm doing better. If you want to do me a favor, click that circle up there with my face in it. That's the subscribe button. Hit that thumbs up. Let YouTube know you like the video. And enjoy either one of these videos to the left or right. Y'all have a good one.